Exiled Exiled FPV wants to know, are you going to be taking down your other FPV 101 playlist? Are there any talks of a follow-up to Flow State? So Exiled FPV, uh, I am redoing uh, my How to Fly, my FPV 101 playlist. Uh, this was one of the very, very first pieces of content that I made back in, it has to have been like 2016 or 2017, uh, probably 2016, I would guess. And the uh, the content in it was very good. Uh, I still stand by the, the actual way that I teach people to fly, but the production quality was terrible. Uh, I didn't know at the time <laughs> enough about audio engineering. And there were times when I was like talking into the mic and the mic was clipping and distorting awfully. So I've actually had that playlist unlisted for a long time just because it's so old and it, it reflects, I think, really badly on the quality of the channel. But... I uh, started, so I was like, well, let's redo it. Let's just redo it. Um, I say that because I have been in the last few years, uh, some of the times when I go away and I'm not live streaming, I'm actually teaching uh, people how to fly. Um, somebody uh, out there decided they wanted their employees to learn how to fly and they decided I was the guy to do it, among others. And so I actually have had a lot of practice in the last few years with taking people who've never flown before and teaching them how to fly. And I've kind of refined the methods. And I thought, well, it's a good time for me to put this all down and share it with the world because that's what I do. Uh, and uh, so I, I don't think I'll be taking the other one down. It's already unlisted, uh, but I would definitely uh, like, uh, I prefer that people use the newer one. Uh, once it's once it's finished, because I think it's going to be better. Are there any talks of a follow up to Flow State? No, there aren't. Um, I love uh, the Flow State is the FPV drone documentary. I may as well. By the way, I don't know if you guys know this. I should I should let people know. Uh, to make a big announcement about this. Um, actually, Flow State is now free on YouTube. Yeah, you didn't know that. You didn't know that because it didn't, it hadn't happened until very recently in the last few months. Um, what happened was, so why isn't it on my channel, right? Why didn't I just post it? We had actually thought about doing that, uh, but the, um, the company that we use to put Flow State on like Amazon Prime and other streaming services, they put it on YouTube. And I, at first I said, well, did you just put it on my channel? But then I saw that the channel that they put it on had 176 million subscribers. And I decided that might be better than putting it on my channel. <laughs> um, so actually, I actually uh, haven't looked at the comments recently. Uh, lots of shout outs, 159. They don't make their view count visible, unfortunately. I don't know why. This video is not monetized. Why is it not monetized? That doesn't seem right. Well, anyway, um, regardless, uh, it is now available for free. If you haven't gotten a chance to watch it, uh, I'm, I would hope that it's monetized. I would hope that they show ads because I would hope that they're paying me for showing my movie. Uh, it seems like the kind of thing they would do. I'm going to just assume. Uh, but, uh, as far as a follow-up goes, uh, no, there are no talks of a follow-up to Flow State. Um, I've always been really frank about what went into making that film and really straightforward about the things that could have been done better. Uh, and, uh, the, the, the film, uh, I spent between 30 and $40,000 all in on that film. Uh, and, uh, suffice it to say, I'm still in the red. <laughs> I'm very happy when I started making the film. Uh, and by the way, I should give credit to James Christensen, who was the, my partner in making the film. He basically did all of the creative work and I basically put up the money. And also as the guy who put up the money, I sometimes, uh, had creative input, but mostly everything you see on screen is his work. Uh, and he really should get most of the credit for actually making the film. I think my credit was executive producer. And if you're in the film industry, you know exactly what that means <laughs> in terms of <laughs> what I brought to the table. But uh, when I when we started making the film, uh, we both had the idea for how to make the film. 
and wanted to contribute to making the film. And I thought, uh, this is something I want to do. And if I never make a penny on it, I'll still be happy that I did it and have something that I can look at and be proud of. I love FPV and the culture of FPV. And I wanted to make this film that could sort of memorialize, if you will, uh, the state of FPV in the 2020, 2021 timeframe, talk about the history and so on. I wanted to have something I could show my kids or my grandkids someday and go, this, this is something that was really important to me and hopefully still is. Uh, but, um, as far as making a second one goes, uh, it doesn't seem like, uh, it doesn't seem like I know how to make a, uh, profitable film. And I feel like that's the amount of money I would like to flush down the drain. Uh, on unprofitable films, at least for now. <laughs> I guess that's the most charitable way to put it. People are asking if you have any control over the regions where it's available. Like if you could ask for them to open it up to more regions or it's just like some kind of limitation. Because people in Europe and other locations are saying they can't see it. They can't see it on, on, on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I mean, we can certainly try. I'm going to guess... That has to do with the YouTube movies and TV channel and the other content they have there, but I don't know. Um, we can we can go back to Film Hub and try to get that opened up, but uh, uh, sometimes there are aspects of it that we don't have control over. I mean, I could still just put it up on my channel. I don't know why. I mean, I don't see why I wouldn't do that. Uh, I'd probably get more money in terms of ad revenue. Anyway, 